Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for episode two of Alien Awakening. The title has been redacted. You'll find out why by the end of the episode, I promise. That being said, uh, as always, if you like what we're doing here and you want to support the channel and all the things we do, Patreon is the best way to do that. Link for that down below. If you want to join the conversation and be a part of the community, the Discord link for that is down below. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar fills, docking through the shell that she wants to us, which she already has six. So, you know... Uh, and two, every single dollar that goes into filling that bar goes back to these wonderful players you see here before you. With that, Dot, take us into space. Maybe a light uh, recap of our characters and what happened last week uh, before we hop in. We met uh, four individuals living uh, on, a, on an underwater mining colony on a frozen planet. Two weeks prior, a massive uh, explosion and malfunction happened in the reactor itself, which is mining radioactive material from the core of this planet. What makes it radioactive? Well, Wayland Yutani feels that information is not necessary. These four individuals each maintaining a, some kind of position on this colony, a medic, a Xeno, what are you, Mike? You're the rock lover. I'm a xenogeologist. Yes, a xenogeologist, um, the lover of rocks, uh, and rather quirky. Uh, our roughneck, simple man named TBD, <laughs> <laughs> and and a child, uh, a young boy, twelve. Did we decide twelve or thirteen? Eleven. 11, not even, um, 11 years old, recently um, po possibly orphaned, as both of his parents were part of the explosion in the reactor two weeks prior. But recent activities, thanks to an extreme amount of corruption bars, led to the revealing that the, the original team that had gone down was still alive and had crawled the 10 miles from the bottom to the top over a series of two weeks only to reach the top and uh, be pushed over the limit and they beat each other to death. Four were already dead, four new ones dead, and two still missing. But the Whalen yutani rep, Doug Dimidome, was not... <laughs> was not going to let whatever's going on down there stop the activity on this mining colony. Production and money are key. So Jake fixed our, Jake fixed our, Ben, uh, fake, fixed our reactor um, and, uh, or fixed the elevator down to the bottom of the reactor. And when they reached the bottom, what they found was a ship buried deep in the ice and snow, crashed here, thanks to some research, guessing about 10 years prior. The drill actually unearthed it and caused a massive malfunction, which in essence an explosion. And aboard this ship are three crates, rather large in size, four individuals in frozen, uh, frozen cryopods, and Two additional people, Jake's parents, his mother in one, his father in another. And our crew stands at the bottom, staring at the wreckage of what's left and a hole that has been uh, cut into the side by the team prior. What do you all do? Get back in the elevator. Vince Doug. rushes forward at seeing his parents and goes, Mom, Dad, drops whatever he's holding and just sprints uh, to, uh, they were in a cryo tube. Yeah, like they're both in like cryostasis pods across from one another. It's almost he, like this this chamber that you've walked into is the cryo chamber. So there's six of them, three against each wall. Okay. And are they, are they vertical or are they like laying down? They are, uh, these are vertical for space purposes. Okay, for space purposes. 
All right, yeah, he rushes right up to one of them and like puts his hand on the glass and looks up it, just in silence. Um, Dr. Eve, you would know that, um, you know about cryosleep and you've, you've put many, many a people in it for various reasons. Um, all of the, all of them, all six like data uh, screens attached to mm -hmm. them show that there is life um, that their heart rates are pretty steady and that whatever backup generator, which usually is installed on a ship and can last decades, um, given the situation, has been powering this um, since it crash landed. Mm -hmm. um, so they are all stable from what you can tell. Um, uh, hang on. Hang on, Mike. Yeah. Uh, send me that thing you're supposed to send me. Um, are, is there any at, at the data pads for all of these pods? Is there any names or tags or anything about the other four that we are not aware of? Yes, yes, there is. Um, the names. Let's see. You don't see. Um, that would probably be on their their jackets uh, or their okay. in, like whatever suits they're wearing. But mm. um, you see. I want to make sure I get this right. Yes, three males and a female. Um, does anybody have no? Okay, we're good. Yeah, so three males and a female. Okay, I'm sorry, two males and one female. Um, kind of put away. Um, there are a bit. Uh, one of them probably based on the shave and the haircut is military. Waylon okay. Utani assigned. Um. She looks well kept, um, probably uh, probably corporate. Mm -hmm. The other two look like they live on the rim. Interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's they 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 may even come from different worlds if that makes sense. But they're all board uh, this vessel together. But their life their uh, their life signs are rather stable. Okay, I think um, she'll just yeah. look around for any kind of uh, ship manifest or if, if, if she has to leave the, the immediate area, she'll probably kind of wander and see if everything seems to be functioning on the ship itself. Yeah, you wonder, uh, you do note that Vince is kind of like I, face plastered against like his mom's uh, cryo tube, he's like looking in, she's very stable. His father's life signs show um, massive damage to his <laughs> chest cavity. Okay. Um, does it appear to be an, an internal I injury or is it visible? So to the far eye? from what you can tell, um, the body was almost, I mean, when you go into cryostasis, you would know it, it basically almost stops the body in time, right? It right. slows down everything, including the metabolism of the body. Mm -hmm. So some people use this to slow the aging process or mm -hmm. if they are sick, um, with things like cancer, uh, things that can't be cured, um, they will put themselves into a cryostasis. It looks like he was dealing with some kind of internal internal injury or issue when they put him in this. They they stopped him. Okay. Do these pods have uh, medical scanning, or do I, would I have to move him? Um, to... That you could kind of see it, like boop boop boop. Okay. But you would want to, if you needed to actually like do medical work on him, if you were going to open this up and take a look at him. Um, you would want to take him somewhere because this is just a cryopod. Okay. Is that injury on Vince's father visible just by looking at him through the tube? Or is it kind of one of those things where it's like frosted up except you No, can just you see, see the head. like you see just like this. So it just looks like your dad kind of sleeping. He's a little pale of lip, but all in all, he's fine. Okay. Um your mother is looks like sunshine. <laughs> My mom looks like sunshine. Um, <laughs> she, she's going to actually start the um, the process to bring him out of cryo. Um, he probably won't wake up right away, so she wants to probably yeah um, get him to medical where they are at the very least. Because oh, so actually, take him ba take yeah. him back up. So mm. Vince turns to the doctor and says, "Are they are they okay? Can we get them out? Can we take them up?" Well, we could, the problem is we have a bit of an issue because we are uh, blocked from getting to medical oh, due to yeah. the mm, 
So maybe actually it would be better to not at the moment take them out of cryo just just in case. And I that don't have sense. a full medical team here. So um, why don't we wait on that and figure out kind of what's going on with the ship and see if uh, we can figure out how it got here and um, if we can exit to get to the reactor and fix it. Jake, you would know that these cryopods will detach and you can move the bodies in them up for a period of time if you wanted to just send them up the elevator. Uh, you know, uh, these have some limited response time. No, we, we could move them. We just got to get them to the, uh, the elevator. Well, what will keep them powered? I mean, how much time do you think we'll get out of it on its own? Yeah, I don't know. Probably a couple of hours. Maybe maybe we should just leave them here until we know how to fix what happened up up top. Yes, I would agree with that because we don't know how long it'll take us. If we, assuming, can stop the reactor from completely killing everybody, then we can deal with the other problem, which we'd be getting to the rest of the facility. I'm thinking that's probably the best bet. Okay. Who are, who are these other people? Uh, it appears based on the research that uh, I and Professor Barden discovered a little bit earlier, these are possibly people that were on the ship that came here maybe about 10 years ago. I would not recommend taking them out of cryo considering that they were marked as fugitives, so. What's, is that like a criminal, right? When you yes. say that, Doug Dimadome. Oh, hypes up. And he looks at you and he says, criminals, you say? Well. Haunted by? Yes. He becomes very interested. The look on his face shifts to. Clebon, I don't understand. We were all there together. How do you not remember? Do you have an attention span? I don't think, I don't think he was Small child. Attention. He gave me his I... card. Yes. We were all there together. <clears throat> If these are, in fact, fugitives, Waylon yutani is due here in one week's time, and I would like to be able to provide them with something that clearly is long lost. He points to the crates at the end of the room. About Great. the length, or, like, at the end of, like, the storage yeah, space, yeah. right, at the far end. Um, they are stamped Waylon yutani Well, you can take the credit for that. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Uh, he looks at the two uh, kind of soldiers that came down here and he says, um, listen to the uh, Ben. Listen to Ben. He's going to detach these and we're taking them up. But the, but the bridge is broken. You can't take them anywhere once you get up there. Yeah, that's exactly what was said. You like, missed the memo? Like literally like two minutes ago, he said the whole... We have to stop the reactor first. Doctor, are these cryotubes waterproof? Airtight? Uh, they should be, yes. Clipon, I feel like you're missing the point here. The reactor is going to explode in 13 hours. And yeah. when it explodes, Wait. there goes everybody. You Wait, see the size of It's not going to matter a, a, a damn bit at all. Yeah. We can't live another half a day. They're going to come to whatever you call an underwater... Crater is what they're going to Fine, 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 fine. I understand. It, ka kaboom. Do you I understand? Because I said this yes. upstairs so, and then again so just recently. Would somebody enlighten me? What are we to do? What are we supposed to do now that we're down here? Okay, we're going to go to the reactor. I don't know, and we're going to fix the reactor. So does anybody have any experience with, with machines at all? We could see what's going on with the ship. Um, no, I don't. But, but uh, Ben, you look like a very intelligent guy. And I think Clip-On could is. be real... Well, thank you. I think clip-on could be real useful. I know that if sometimes when you break a wire, you can take a piece of chewing gum and put it together. And we don't have a lot of chewing gum, but we could probably use clip-on to burp, just get him in there and give him a use, I right? I do have some technological experience, but I, you I don't know. Chewing gum. And any, any kind of help will be better than none. Right. You just got to get in there and see what, what exactly has happened. I feel like there's a very obvious question that is on the table that nobody's really said anything about. Which is? The elevator's been down for how long? And those men climbed 10 miles? Why yeah. wouldn't they just climb in cryo? 
Um, there might not be any more functioning pods. They could have been damaged. Um, maybe they don't know how to do it. Uh, any those... variety of reasons, or perhaps the radiation had gotten to the point where they were completely out of their minds. So, mm. I mean, I'm a xenogeologist and not a cryo specialist, but I'm pretty sure that model you can't just do it yourself. I think someone's got to put you in it. No, you, you, you can. Oh, you, you can. can do it. Do you can do it yourself. Well, well yeah, you learn like something new every day. You, got, I you, got you one can them... do it from the inside. You got one of them photo things, right? You know, yeah. Camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how you set like a self timer. Yeah, that's basically what it is. This is. Oh. Hmm. Well, we had a company Android on our ship that was like, burp, 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 and they're all for us. And then I woke up here. Here we are. We should probably make our way to the reactor. I oh, have the... a, an oh, out yeah, of game ahead. question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is this ship? Did it literally crash down into this subdermal ice what layer? It... Like, is it damaged? Or yes, is it intact? the front the front end is mostly collapsed, uh, so mm. it looks like it probably dove in, like smashed through the ice and into the water, and then got trapped, right? Okay. And then it was um, now it's been turned up by the drill, by the rig itself. It like oh. dug in and like churned it. That's how big this rig is. Uh, this okay. right, this is like a toy coming out of the dirt um, in comparison to how big this um, massive drill is. So it's um, kind of laid on its side. You can see the unearthed rubble or dirt, mm. uh, which is where one of the, the forms of dirt came from that um, Eve already found. Um, yeah, so okay. it, you can definitely see that the front end is crushed. And actually one of the soldiers, these, these uh, that came down here goes, uh, uh, Mr. Dimidome, sir, um, I found something. <laughs> and uh, he comes over and you can see that the medical kits and all of the kind of like radiation shots, anything that they would have had, have been used up. Empty, empty casings, those kinds of things. Uh, you would immediately also recognize that. I would think, Doctor Eve, uh, that that is, um, yeah, they that found they, it and just yeah, they, it they as, found it and yeah. used it amongst them to try to stay alive as long as they could. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, she's uninterested. I think at this point in what's in this area, and she's going to look around to see if they can get across. Is it blocking their path to the reactor? Mm -mm. Okay. No, you can definitely, you kind of on the ground floor where it, I guess you would say it touches, even though it goes deeper into the earth. Mm -hmm. um, so from here, you can see that where the damage is to the drill itself and what caused the initial explosion was the churning up of this. It's like putting a rock in a lawnmower, right? It yep. like dug this thing up yeah. and it, it, it kind of rattled it. And so the ship is damaged from it and it, it, it damaged the rig itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did know that if you could, you needed to come down here and release pressure, right? right? Because if the drill's not, is, is pulling up radioactive material, but not releasing it, which is probably what's going on. Um, uh -huh. that's where I, the explosion is going to happen. So is the drill the still trying to go? Okay. To some degree, you could hear some things churning, yeah, yeah, other yeah. things aren't, so things aren't working in tandem. Okay. I'm going to check the crates if I can. Yeah. At the end. Uh, yeah, I want to move, move mm -hmm. to the end. Yeah, you go all the way to the end. So you see uh, three very large ones, uh, about six or seven foot long by about four foot wide. If you pop the exterior crate, you find inside another container. This one is, uh, you can you can still see the ice kind of coming out of the side um, screen in the front. These are bodies. These are, this is not a cryo tube. This is a, this is a coffin to keep the body fresh. Huh. And there are three of those. And then there are some square crates uh, that are in, uh, you know, an airtight um, container that are kind of dumped over. Uh, you can see one of them has been opened. Um, the lid lays off to the side and the crate's been dumped over. It's the only one that is uh, open. Sure. I mean, how large is the crate, this one that's been spilled over? Four by four, maybe. Nothing that you couldn't easily pick up. And even if you kind of tip it over and look, you see there's almost like a cooler and on the inside is this uh, organic uh, kind of egg like uh, thing. And it's kind of splayed open at the top the way a plant might open itself um, to release pollen. 
Um, but it stands open, and on the inside you can smell it. It's kind of disgusting and gross. And yeah. that crate was already open? Barden? That one was already open, yep. <laughs> Barden! Yeah, bud. What do you got? This ain't rocks, but you're going to want to see this. Doc, you want to take a look at this, too? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm ready for it. Well, yeah. hey. she, she walks over, and she's just observing, looking around. You all see it. What do you make of this? That's, uh, well, you know. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Let me just get out of my... <sighs> what is this? You poke it, uh, and it reacts like it kind of... A little bit, like it, it reacts to your touch. Um, who all is looking at this thing? Um, Vince. I imagine it's probably everyone. Everybody, yeah. Vince too. Vince Everybody can take a point of everyone. stress for okay. seeing something that you've never seen before. Great. This is uh, this is clearly some kind of uh, life form. If I had to guess, if I had to say so, it reacts to touch. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a plant of some kind. It has a. Liquid interior, perhaps uh, something was inside of it, like a spore sack, like a, like the stamen of a flower, right? You, you mean like those? And one of the, <laughs> you what? hear one of the commandos at the other end point to the kind of decrepit end of the vessel that was crunched in on the initial impact. And you can see there is a fungus. It almost um, kind of glows um, uh, on its like interior point. It's kind of... Um, circular and dome shaped the way a cactus might form uh but definitely um is kind of letting off light spores into the air and it's covering the front end of the vessel much deeper in uh oh. i mean maybe i don't know it's not my field what of expertise is, what is that mm. is this something Barton. that we don't don't put that in your mouth just i would agree don't, don't i would not consume is this what we were digging up in just guess. any of it that's fair or is um, this from, I know this ship shape. crashed, right? So they, I they believe brought these this, here. Yes, I believe this is okay. the stolen cargo that it's was in cool. the report. It is kind of putrid, actually. So um, I would recommend leaving it alone, but mostly because we have another task at hand. So I don't know if we want to have some people stay behind here to deal with whatever this is and... The, the engineer and, and everybody else to deal with the reactor or since I, I imagine too many cooks in the kitchen applies in this particular case. How, uh, how far away are we from from this uh, this reactor? I know that we our, our intention is oh, to tw I'd say 20 feet or so from the edge of this giant like drill reactor thing, you know, like okay. you've got a, lo a bit of space between you and all of the turned up dirt and getting to the edge of it. Okay. Um, can we, yeah, like, can we visibly take a look at it? Of course, yeah. You can yeah, just yeah. exit the vessel and, like, you know, get a back up a little bit to get a better view of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do. We get this big wide shot of this turned up vessel. It looks like a small toy in a sandbox. This giant drill. And we see Ben, um, kind of standing back, taking it all in. Um, do you, hmm. On first glance, there's definitely been, been an explosion. It's not necessarily smoking anymore. It's been too weak. Actually. Do we smell smoke? Yes, because further up, there was a secondary explosion, which is what caused the bar to like cut through the ice. And um, some water is pouring in, not like a, a fast rate or anything, but you can hear kind of the trickle um, that the walls are not as solid down here in terms of the earth and the, the water. Um, mm -hmm. It's a rather dangerous place, in fact. Um, ben. What do you see? I'm actually going to have you roll ComTech. Okay. Unless you have a piece, a piece of heavy machinery you think can help you in, like, figuring out what's going on. If not, then it's just going to be a general piece of, like, what do I see? What do I know about this tech? Hmm. Um, I also roll ComTech? Sure. Uh, ComTech is not like a super strong thing for me, and that that typically revolves around some of the more like the. You know the what though? This is a giant but, drill, so I take yeah, heavy machinery. Be, can I, I, I take say, it? Can I take machinery? Yeah, absolutely. T do heavy machinery if that's better. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I would say uh, if you still wanted to roll ComTech, you could definitely do that. And I down here, there's going to be like a computer piece or something that you can actually like. Okay, let's see here. Oh, well, look <laughs> at that. So, um. You 
oh, that, I've never been down here. This isn't really your job, but you've worked with a lot of heavy machinery. Um, the damage is exponential. Um, there are a few options. When a machine is broke, turn it off. What? Like if it's broken, like don't run the broken lawnmower, right? So right. Um, that is a like instantly you're like, we could just turn this thing off and stop it, release, uh, but we wouldn't be doing any production. Um, to fix it, you're still going to have to shut pieces of it down um, because you're going to need lots of parts. This is no small uh this is no small thing. They're going to have to bring in machines to even get up as high as some of the damage actually possibly is. Um, for now, uh, you would uh, guess the best thing to do is to vent it and to turn it off. Oh, is fuck. There... Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh, there's not really a good answer for this, but I, I, I think I got to get in there and, and just shut it off. Uh, we've we got to replace some of these parts. Let's shut you, it off. You can't turn it off. We can't stop production. We're a week out from from pickup. Hey, Doug, we're, do we're, me a favor. Uh, fuck off. We, <laughs> we don't can't. really have a choice. <clears throat> you want production to continue at all, and if you want to survive, we got to shut this off to replace the parts. For how long? Uh, long enough to as, get a replacement, right? As long as it takes. Uh, well. Here's the issue. We don't want to die from this explosion, so let's shut it off. So then we can solve the other problem of getting to the rest of the facility to potentially fix the Hey, trip. on the nose. Doc's got it. Hey, uh, I don't want to step on any toes here, Ben, but uh, you mind if I, uh, mind if I give it a look there? Just to... Uh, please, by all, my, by, by all means, if just extra double, eyes are better. Double check here. Uh, he drops down his adventurer's pack that he's clearly carrying, this massive backpack, <laughs> and begins rifling through machine parts. Uh, and then he pulls up his box and sort of opens a panel below it and starts clipping <laughs> wires into the panel and sets it down and then starts hitting buttons and you just see scans coming up on the screen. And I'm using my Siegson System Digital di Diagnostic Device. <clears throat> Say How that are again? you? <clears throat> oh. Yeah, one more time, Max. Uh, it's it's the it's the Siegson system diagnostic device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that right, one. right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, it gives you a uh, plus plus two to come. I love that we we see Ben come over and just like turn it off. Like that's the answer to this problem. <laughs> turn this thing off, and then we see Axe come over. And go, let, me let me take a try, and starts like unloading out of his Mary Poppins bag yeah. all of this stuff. Plugs it in, runs a diagnostic. Tell me what. Tell me what this piece of tech actually does. Does it run like a diagnostics of what's in the earth, of a piece of, of technology? Help help me out here. Uh, it 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 is useful for using computer terminals and and doors. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so there is a computer terminal. You go yeah. over. That's what you plug it all. It, it's into. used to troubleshoot computer and mechanical systems aboard a space station or ship. So this is you. You actually um, you get in. Doug comes over, gives you a, a key passcode to get in, and you hack all of this stuff. You got a success. Um, you immediately see it's almost like a, a breakdown of the rig itself, mm -hmm. uh, a plotting of it. And there's one area that kind of shows red, and you can see the, the piece that spins, that pulls everything up, right, uh, it turns up the dirt, has something lodged in it, a very large piece, possibly the missing wing of the vessel behind you. Uh, ben, yeah. see, I've had this device here for like uh, 14 years, and I've just never had a chance to use it. I figured this is a good opportunity as any. Than me. Uh, I don't actually, uh, you got a little red light there. Perfect. So, you got it. Just, just tell yeah. me. Like, I, I don't need the details. Just tell me what I got to do. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. You got a little red blinking light there. I think oh, that's, the, that's okay. the broken thing, I think. So gonna, is it like a is it a visual schematic look. that yeah, I can? It's a visual yeah. schematic that you can see it. So you can see about four or five stories up where the actual drill itself is. It's like a more than likely the wing of this vessel broke off like it would in a vacuum cleaner. The toy would right, and it kind of it's like jammed between the drill, and the drill keeps trying to push, and there's this wing that's like caught in there from this ship. Um, so I think if you just like turn it Jimmy, off, Jimmy you might loose. be able to push it out. That's yeah. definitely a possibility. Could we, perchance, take the elevator up and e-stop it, like emergency stop, and and oh, I love move that. over? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can definitely give it a try. I love that. Okay. Um, you would know that these are going to be tight spaces. Um, 
usually fit for a single person like at a time right because you're just building uh narrow walk paths and oh, um small pieces of scaffolding so um all right i dig that so hey, you're gonna... this uh this 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 drill right it's yeah. um it's pretty heavy duty it's, it's meant to just chew through earth yeah so if something's stuck in it it's got to be something that's pretty durable i would imagine so like a big chunk of metal yeah like so do you th i don't think i'm gonna be able to get through this uh at least not easily enough um you want to go through the ship, see if we can find some like uh, some some, some kind of equipment. Yeah, but that no, that's a, not that's a big that's a big stretch. That's like not where I was going with it, but I was thinking like some industrial bolt cutters or something <laughs> to get through the metal. Well, I don't I don't really know what kind of ship. I'm pretty sure this was like a cargo ship, and it was bound from a prison planet, and clearly the prisoners took over. So I don't really know that. This ship was equipped for heavy duty machinery, well, but in we time, can find I it. Had a, I had my RC car and I attached a rope to the back of it, and then I put one of my action figures on the back of the rope, and then I kind of like drove him around. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I don't uh, know how that story hold on, helps. Hold on, Bart, Bart. Uh, let me. I want to go. But if we up. can like He's use the ship and like pull leverage. the. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> leverage. This. These kind of devices, when they have an opening, so like when they have a dome or a bowl, yeah, um, yeah. it's got an evacuation like process. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just go up and, uh, you know, I, I, I pop the evacuation process. Something's probably going to open it up and may basically make oh. it puke out the bits. Or Wouldn't can, that require can you drill... to remain, leave it on, though? It, isn't the drill always digging down? Hasn't it been going down this whole time? So what if there's an up button? What you if we could can try just, to like... reverse it. I mean, yeah. way, I got to get all the way up to the top. That's where the controls are? There's no controls? Nah, just, just to the top That's... of the drill. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I kind of want to go see what that weird mold is. And Vince looks at the professor. You know, I on was... the other side of the ship. It was like... Yeah, no, weird... I was told to not put it in your mouth, so... Don't put it in your uh, mouth. Doug, I had something come to mind. You said you uh... wanted to bring up a Waylon yutani shit, right? He's he's standing off to the side, looking down at the ground. You catch him off guard. He goes, "What? Uh, yeah, sure." And you can see he covers something up with his foot. Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Jake, uh, my uh, my boy. What were you saying? My name's Ben. Right, Ben. He's calling I my boy. I got that right last time. What um <clears throat> can I do for you? I'm gonna walk up to him. I, I kind of want to talk to you about something. I had uh, I had something in mind. Um. But first, and like I kind of like I, I just want to shove him. Oh, I'm gonna shove him off of it. Whatever, oh. he's, whatever he's attempting to hide, I'm just gonna like kind of just shove him off of it. Uh, he kind of he stumbles a little bit. He, he still oh you shit know, a spider. Yep. Like point down. Yep, it's a multi-legged creature. Oh, I was it's... actually like actually saying a spider. I was trying to think of a reason to shove him. No, there is actually oh oh oh, and he goes where? Um, <laughs> as, you, as you shove him and he jumps, but to your surprise, Ben. At your feet is, in fact, dusted over the body of a rather large, kind of looks like an arachnid. It's got multiple feet and, un strangely enough, a large tail. And he was very clearly trying to cover it up. It seems very dead. Um, its legs kind of curled in like any insect, but um, he didn't want you to see it. And there is, in the center of its bar body, a, lodge, a large orifice. Ugh. Oh, I was... Was fucking around. What is that? What is, what is what? that? Vince runs up to get a look at. <laughs> I don't know. He goes, don't, don't, don't touch that, kid. Uh, that is Waylon Yutani property. Oh, that's, that's like a giant spider scorpion. And both of you can take thing. stress for seeing another thing you've never seen. Oh, is it alive? Hey, why the fuck are you trying to cover this spider up? I, I, I thought it was dead. I didn't think you all were worried about the reaction. You did a burial. <laughs> No. I've done that before. I don't. You buried a... Vince, you buried a spider? I wasn't... Well, I did it. I found it here. I found it. You found it. All right. I, I, congrats, I guess. What What do you What do you call on it? Aside from dead. dead. It's dead. <laughs> it's dead. I don't... No. I'm I just don't talking. know if... Move I was your, about to say, your, it's the professor just move your, talking. Move your foot out of the way. Get out. Let me, let me see this thing. Have you seen something like this before, Professor? Just... No, he hasn't, so he can take a point of stress, too. <laughs> Hold on, I got a taste for it. Hold on, I got it. Let me... gotta... <laughs> I'm going to jab it with this fountain pen. 
Uh, the... Mike, you can take a point of stress too, because yeah, you've never gladly. seen anything like this. Happily, Dot. What is this? What is this? It's got like eight hey, legs Dot, and a tail. I sent you a, a, a zoom. Yep, and I saw that. Let me. Oh, okay, I'm gonna answer okay. that right now. Yeah, okay. I. Let me double check. That looks That's disgusting. Is this dead? Oh, what, what the hell is that? I have a theory. All, All right. right. And I'm gonna warn you. It's oh. gonna be gross. So bear with me. Bear with me. I just want to make sure this is dead. Why does the thing look like a downstairs mix-up right there? What is that? I don't. I don't know what that is or means, but it does look like that. Me if I had to guess. Uh, Dot, this thing is is for sure. I'm poking it, so it's for sure. It's like not moving. Yeah, like you can see, like just like any dead body. Um, here's the thing, though. This has been dead a while. It's getting. Um, so it's pretty rigid. Yes, I would say it's rigid or like getting crusty around the edges. Mm -hmm. The way you know. Uh, the juices are all dried up. Yeah, no, a little place. crusty. I get it. A little crusty. Uh, um, wash that thing, girl. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Rated Bub. for mature. Oh, Bub. <laughs> this sounds nasty. You're getting, getting I nasty. Feel like that calls for, that's just corrupt. Oh, that's just no. corrupted, oh. Bob. There are no bars God. for that. Lee. That's a, that's a critical injury, man. <laughs> Okay, all right, listen, <laughs> listen, I'm going to try this, but don't make any sudden movements. It's, it's, it's an experiment. And, uh, okay, let me just, hold on, let me just, I got to get my gloves out of here. And he pulls on. Yep, snap, yep. snap. And he's going to pick this thing up by the tail, and he's holding it, like, out here. It's, like, I mean, now you're kind of getting a better look. Um, you shake off some of the sand and see that it has kind of a fleshy tone to it oh, yeah. um That's near gross. where the the legs meet the core Ugh. body um it's kind of webbed and there's a, a thin skin on it or was most of it now like i said kind of dried up maybe tearing a little bit um it doesn't seem to have a lot of bodily fluids um if yeah that's what you see um the the, <laughs> the orifice is closed tight Good, perfect. Uh, listen, uh, Doctor, I don't know if you're gonna want to do experiments on this, but uh, you might have some uh, some uh, broken bits. Just hold on a second. Oh God! And Why he's are you gonna, holding it like you're trying to Why? juice it. Stop it. He's gonna walk Why? over to the weird pod and just sort of <laughs> and try to jam it. Try to put back, it back in. in. Yeah, like a horseshoe crab. Just well, <laughs> back right, in. Well, okay. <laughs> And that was your intuition? <laughs> That's... There's more. Wait. Over. Okay, I get this. This is very much a uh, does the triangle fit in the circle. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Um, Barton goes over and you see him try to jam this crusty arachnid back into this egg sack. That's a, that's, a, that's a series that's a of words. New sentence I, right I, there. I, we're gonna start a band called Krusty Arachnid. It's gonna do a sensation on Twitch. Parentheses in the egg sack. Please, if um, everyone, if, if anyone ever refers to anything vaginally as a as a crusty arachnid, you have my full permission to shoot them in the heart with anything sharp because they're a terrible individual. Jesus. <laughs> Oh my God. The, 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 it takes a while and finally you realize, no, the triangle does not fit in the circle hole, but you are a scientist. So you begin to maybe handle it more than the tail and you realize the tail like curls up on itself. And then you're like, oh, well maybe the legs. And it kind of crunches. You can hear some of the flesh, the tight flesh, like crack a little bit, but you almost get it balled up. And then you drop it and it right into the egg sack as if it fits perfectly. Okay. Okay. Have you figured out what? what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I figured out. That is in a spore pod like a stamen of a flower. It's an egg sack for giant crusty spiders. Okay, okay. now take it back out. <laughs> I'm not going to take it back out. Why? Because I don't need to do experiments on it. Well, if you I want can it, dissect you it. get to where? Right here in the middle of the. I always have a scalpel with me. What's wrong with you? How does that help us fix a reactor? It doesn't, but I can't do anything about the reactor. Ben said he was going to deal with the reactor, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go do that now. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to. You know what? I'm going to. You know what? I'm going to. I'm going to come with you because um, I don't. This is, this is a giant crusty spider that I've never seen before. I don't know how it died. I don't know what it does, and I'm just. I'm not going to. 
I'm not okay. going to get killed by a giant You go spider. do that, and I'll do the actual medical work. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Actually, uh, Vince, kid, come here. Come here. I got a job. I got a job. So before Vince goes over to the professor, are there more crates that are this shape and size that are not uh-huh. opened? There are th- face! That's... There are three, yeah. you said? <laughs> Yes, so that reminds head. me of uh, so, so, Nicholson. Yes, thank you. You know, yes. after seeing after seeing the professor dunk this thing inside of an egg, Vince to, then just like scopes his head and sees that there are more crates. There are three more. There are three more. Are, three more all, unopened, 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 s- still sealed. That's not true. Okay. <laughs> all right, Dr. And, Eve reaches in and grabs the previously. Yeah, you you Vince, pull it out. You see it too. Yeah. All balled up. Vince, Vince goes to the professor. What? What okay. is it? Kid, I got a job for you. Your, your man's assistant, right? Yeah. It's a big important job, right? Ben, a big important job, right? Okay. Yes. I have what I would say an even bigger, more important job. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you up for the task? It's my question. Do you think you can handle it? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Hold on one second. And he, just, and he takes the backpack off again and again. <laughs> And he pulls out another device that has like a shotgun mic looking thing on the front of oh. it. Okay, I'm going to you to. Okay, you got to hold this. And you get. Boop, okay. boop, boop. This front part here. This is the screen, right? Like, you, like your RC car. Okay? You got to okay. point it. And then every 30 seconds or so, however many times you feel like it, you got to hit this trigger down here like a gun, right? And it's going to do a boop. And then you watch it. And right now, look at it. Right now, you see one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. That's it. Right? Seven dots. And Vince, because I think Zach knows what this is, mm-hmm. Vince turns and sees the dots change relative to his position. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the important part is if you see any more than seven dots at any given time, I need you to just be as loud as you can. Because <laughs> you're a child and I assume you're loud. I, uh, Sure. Okay. If I see more than seven dots, yeah. Cause every thirty s- seconds, I seven, I press the button. Two, three, four, five, yeah, because there's seven dots of us, <laughs> and so an eighth dot would mean crusty spider, that's alive. Wait, so the dots are us? Yeah, right. Like, okay. Would uh, yeah. the cryopods technically come up as well? I don't. Um, I don't that's think a good so. question. Yeah. What does it track? It do. They have to though. So they track still body does it track heat there. It does. It does still track life. They, 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 still... they track it in one of the films where they're like, no, yeah, yeah they're there, but it's like their readings are so low that so it's like. Uh, so then, then, so then they would. You would the see appropriate probably number of a, dots. Yeah, yes. you'd see another six. So you'd see yeah. thirteen in total, but the six of them are kind of clustered, right? Because they're on top of one another. So they're kind of like you call them a hot spot, like off on the side. Oh no! And they're not moving. They would not. They would not show up in this one. This is a motion device. Oh, oh, it's based yeah. on motion. Yeah, yes, yeah. This so is no, this is the, this is the M three one four motion tracker. Got it. Okay. She's All gonna right. makeshift starting this uh, okay. autopsy slash dissection. Vince takes the uh, motion tracker and then says, "Oh, I I have something that's a little like that too. Um, I I uh, it's mom and dad's, but I think they'd want me to use it." And Vince kind of digs in his own little, you know, not a fanny pack, but his own little, like little tiny bag that he carries with him. Yeah, and yeah, like pulls... your your legs bag or something. Yeah. yeah, or maybe like I'm wearing some cargo pants or yeah. inside my suit. <laughs> Space cargo. And pants. I pull out this little, uh, like, disc uh, of some sort, and then uh, I say, my my dad said that this was like a a locator. I don't know how it works though, because uh, one of the items that I chose when making Vince is a personal locator beacon. Oh. But I wasn't able to find how exactly it works. How it's it just, works. That's just the name. So in my head, there's actually there's usually two, it's two, right? Okay, so, so I would have the, two. So the I guess. personal locator beacons came into play for all of you that want to know uh, in the second film, right? When Ripley gives one, he gives Ripley one. Spoiler alert. He gives Ripley one, and Ripley in turn gives it to Newt. the girl. Newt, right, Newt, right? She hands it off. And so it's like, it's kind of like square, and it's got a disc on it. Um, and there's there's almost like, um, it's like a Marco Polo type thing. You have it, and they have something that helps like boop, 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 like yeah. track you. It's like a key tracker. 
Got it. So you can't lose your keys. Um, so okay. there would be like something that you could hand off to somebody else or vice okay. versa. Like you can either track them or they can track you. So uh, with that remembering of knowledge, Vince would actually then turn to uh, Ben and go to hand him one of these locator beacons and say, hey, if you're going to go up, um, you can use this to make sure that you know where we are. Ben, he pokes yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? I'm just fucking weirded out. That's, oh. that's nasty. I, don't, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, if they're anything like actual spiders, maybe they're not cool, but... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I mean, I think that's cool that you like it and all, but, like, spiders are gross. Yeah, they kind of are. <clears throat> but I have this new thing. Look. And he lifts up the, the motion tracker beacon thing and waves it around. See? If you move your arm, you'll show up on the thing. Okay, that's anyway. Um, right on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay down here because, yeah. And Vince just, like, turns and walks away. All right. He's got all kinds of doodads. <laughs> <laughs> and so my understanding is that Professor Barden and Ben are headed up the elevator about four or five stories to see if they can't cut in and see what's <clears throat> actually going on on the interior so they can potentially turn it off or figure out a way to dislodge this debris. Yes? Yes. That is Great. correct. Okay. Cool. Just making sure we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. All right. So that leaves the our medic and Jake for the first time yes. kind of standing as we watch the two of them walk off. You are down here with the two commandos and, of course, Doug, uh, clip on, mm -hmm. and uh, all of these cryopods. So we're going to start with the two of you as we hear the elevator in the background, like, and begin moving up. She's dissecting this thing. She you wants find to know a, what it is. <clears throat> yeah, you find a flat rock because there's not a table in there that's yeah. like level in the yeah. vessel, right? And lay it out and you begin like cutting it open. Um, let's actually get a roll from you on this. Okay. Um, and we we watch you very ceremoniously crack its legs back open and begin cutting into um, its gut. Uh, let's Vince, get a medical aid. <clears throat> uh, Vince helps her as much as he can. Uh, and maybe with some light. You know, because yeah, it is yeah. rather Holding dark down here. Like, you come on, you you add a little bit yeah. of light yeah. to it. And you he can add an seem extra to be, die. He okay. doesn't seem to be too grossed out unless, like, weird juices or fleshy things start no, showing this up. Is but... Like I said, this is kind of dried out. But, okay. Two successes. Oh, two successes. Okay. You hear this kind of solid crunch. Uh, this is definitely not like dissecting a frog in science class. It's not that juicy. Um, it crunches. Um, a little bit as you cut basically uh, vertically across the orifice mm -hmm. and you try to kind of pry it open and you watch as it creaks and you peel back the layer of flesh and uh, well, uh, you see a couple things. The first thing is that it looks like uh, there is some additional tissue uh, that um, probably uh shoots out of the orifice itself like if you peeled the it would come it would come out you can even press a little bit you see yeah. that there's there's some muscle reaction there at least what's left in its very decayed state mm -hmm. um, and that uh there's a place inside of the i hate to call it the belly but like the core of this yeah. that held some kind of oblong uh egg-sized object mm -hmm. hmm. that's interesting um, can she, uh, cut down the line of the tail just to kind of get a, an understanding of the anatomy of, of it? Yeah. I would say you got an extra success, right? Yeah. You only need one in this game, which is great. And yeah. so you're like, I gotta know more. And then she begin to watch. She never flinches as she kind of slices perfectly and continues down the tail. And as you peel it back, you notice something about the tail. There's a lot of muscle there. Hmm. This tail is by far the strongest limb on this creature's body, even with its six like spindly yeah. legs. Um, that it, the muscle structure of this is that of a snake. It's built to constrict. Yes. Okay. Interesting. 
Vince remembers to press the motion sensor gun. Yeah. You, oh yeah. Thirty seconds. Way past thirty seconds. You press yeah. the the button and you kind of look around. One, two, three, four, five. You count. And, you count. Yeah. So good. And I'll, so I'll far, rotate so good. around to make sure. Kind of turn it into a little spin dance. Ooh. Yeah. She kind of just makes these mental notes. So, hmm, this is interesting. That's a, and she's like speaking out loud her observations, which she commonly does as she's kind of going through something. Is this um, an alien? Uh, it's definitely not human. So it's a xenomorph of some kind. Um, I mean, like, have have we, have you seen something like this before? Like, did we just discover something? I believe we may have discovered something, although uh, it's not to say that the previous crew didn't discover it first and oh. thus put it into the cargo. So you're right. If, but we have discovered something new about it, which yeah. may have not been discovered before. So that that's a a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, so in here, and she kind of starts pointing out, kind of teaching him essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so over here, if uh, you know snakes are, right? Yes. Okay, so some snakes uh, bite and paralyze their victims. But in this particular case, this is uh, very similar to a constrictor, which means it grasps whatever it's going to uh, most likely kill and then um, <laughs> constricts. And the muscle structure here indicates it's quite strong uh, cool. versus the rest of its body. So it's quite interesting. Um, now, the other side of it, so it feels pretty hard, like an exoskeleton almost on the outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this, on the other hand, is what's protecting the body. So I imagine the um, the other side, the belly, is a little bit more prone to yes. injury. So you can see like the soft, where where the softer places were. Now it's a little emaciated, right? Because it's beginning to like do that decay process. Yes. But yeah. you can see where the meat would be around yeah. the bone structure. Yes. Right, yeah. So this is the soft spot, which means that if we do have to deal with something like that, you'd want to injure that area obviously so hmm. very strange organism hmm. i wonder how the pod has to do with it she's gonna go over to the weird egg pod thing pod, yeah yes you could even if you wanted to it's it's loose now right yeah. and the kind of airtight cooler is no longer cold yeah uh, so you lift it out you begin you see the same discoloration the slow mm -hmm. this is organic right this yes. is an organic object and like any organic object it begins to decay after it has lived past its life um and so you can even set it down on this flat rock next to it and um kind of get a Just better slice yeah, slice off. yeah. <laughs> and you almost the way you might cut a cake i imagine yeah, right yeah. because it's opened up into four yeah. at the top and you slice mm -hmm. just a piece and it kind of cracks as you peel it away and yeah. you can see this this womb yeah this is somewhere where this thing grows mm -hmm. um much the way a bud might nurture some kind of like uh for example cotton is that yeah. way right it starts yeah. and then it blooms into something else a uh, very similar mm -hmm. but there there's nothing about this that is a plant Mm -hmm. um, this is this is an organic piece of life, um, so uh, it's not like anything you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty thick, though. Uh, like the actual wall itself isn't isn't a thin like a, a regular like a human womb. It, it, it's a thick casing on the outside. Yes. Okay. It's very thick. I would say you know it's almost it's it's thicker than our skin. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So she kind of just looks it over, understands kind of what, what's happening on the inside of, of all of it. And well, that's pretty much it. Yep. Um, you do a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, you see this, you ch keep checking, boop, mm -hmm. boop, boop. Nothing odd, but you hear Doug come up and he goes, um, so I've decided, and you can see like the elevator's gone up and delivered the two gentlemen and he comes over and he hits the elevator button to bring it back down a few stories. And he says, while they're up there fixing the problem, the least we can do is begin to move this cargo. Yes, and he goes, you, and he points at one of the commandos, start taking these boxes and loading them onto the elevator. We'll send it to the top and you with it and you can unload them and come back down. And you see this commando slave. And he straps the gun to his back and begins moving the unopened crates very carefully over as the elevator he begins loading these things on and he looks at the other one and he goes, hey you help him move those i'm not paying you to stand around just a clip on eve doesn't intervene 
She doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. She doesn't care. And you kind of watch this happen, but... But... Uh, the first commando and the three smaller crates go up first. Up towards the top they go. And we're going to use our first corruption bar as the other commando begins walking back and uh, he's checking to make sure there aren't any more and he trips over a loose cable, one that was already damaged from the crash of the vessel, the one powering the cryopods. Uh, there's kind of a splatter of electricity and crackling um, as he goes, oh, and he kind of hits the ground um, and it fully rips out. All of you see and hear it um, as the lights flicker on the vessel, what was left of them, and it kind of goes, no, uh, Evie would know this is bad. And like the all the lights, the cryo to power, all of that just dropped? On the yeah, ship. the the basically he whatever he tripped over cut the power like broke the cabling to the cryopods for sure. You know at least that much. No, Vince rushes over to the cable. Uh, the guy who tripped is he like getting up right now? Yeah, he's like getting up and he's like he's like oh my gosh, help oh help my me gosh. fix it. We we need to get the power for the ship back. And he uh... goes over and assist she she understands the power mechanics and everything because of medical people yeah mess you kind of look time. it over he has messed some things up you're gonna need to actually okay. repair some of these cables like par properly repair them which may take some time um you would know uh that you could at this point just wake them up um mm -hmm. if you wanted to that's always an option just like bring them out of cryostasis um if you want to keep them in cryo you are definitely going to have to fix the electrical Okay. Um, she grabs her, her diagnostic device at this point, um, and she sets it down next to her and starts to, to plug in some cables uh, by okay. the cryopod, because yep. obviously it has to hook into some kind of a terminal, um, mm -hmm. just to see if there is indication of where there, if it's a complete power outage, or if there's some cables that are still connected. Did I just get my corruption bar back? I yes. did. Okay. Well, did. thanks, gang. Okay, that's still six. Um, so uh, that's fine for me. I love it. So <laughs> you run diagnostic. Here's what you know. The cables okay. that were connecting it into the wall of the vessel that was feeding it into auxiliary, like secondary power mm. are broken. Mm. Uh, there are a few options. You can feed direct in. Like what better way to power it than to go straight from the pod, which basically you can see like each one's got a cable that comes out the back yeah. and then they bundle into this huge bundle mm -hmm. and feed into the wall of the vessel, right? What better way than to feed it straight from the generator, like mm -hmm. back, right? Uh, straight mm -hmm. to it. So you could bypass the ship because the ship is- Useless. Useless at this yep. point. So um, you could potentially, with the help of the commanders, like moving some things and trying to like pull some wires free, you could reroute power direct to uh, the remaining generator on the vessel. Okay. Um, she'll probably determine that's the most efficient way to do it since the ship is kind of mm -hmm. foobar, as they say. Correct. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, I need you guys to move some of this around for me so I can get to the back panels here and start moving the wiring to get us back online to a degree, although I cannot restore the lighting, the cryo parts uh, are a uh, priority. Vince helps with anything that she needs. Great. Um, the commando tries to help. He's a little clumsy and um, it's going to take a while, right? It's going to take like 10 mm -hmm. minutes or so for that other yeah. elevator to go all the way up. And uh, we see the three of you begin working. So I'm going to get a single roll from you um, and we'll, we'll cut after this. Mm -hmm. um, but let's get the roll to see how successful you are. So this is a com tech. Okay. Can I, I add the take, bonus uh, yep. from add the, the, the device? Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say heavy machinery, but you don't have it. So no. it's better for you to do com tech. So you can tell them more likely how to do it. Okay. No, not It at takes all. some time. And you don't really have what you need. Yeah. Honestly. But we yeah. see the three of you trying. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. see that each one of these is like powered up, right? Yeah. So it's got a period of time, 10 minutes, 12 minutes before it actually begins to thaw and mm -hmm. either release mm -hmm. these people or kill them. Um, and so you work. Um, you work in... Um, it's only a panic when you get a symbol. And yes, everybody, I know that she rolled a panic. Don't worry. I got it. Don't Great. worry. I know. I saw it. <laughs> um, and so the camera pans out 
and goes up an empty elevator shaft, uh, following the elevator, of course, on its way up and stops at floor five, where we see um, Professor Barden and Ben standing on a very small uh, piece of scaffolding that is kind of attached into the larger rig. Here is a very small computer right, that it connects into all of this, very much like the one at the bottom. It's a small landing. And you can see if you're going to cut in, there's a very narrow, like, alcove that you're going to have to go sideways down that, like, feeds you deeper in through the drill and into the reactor. Okay, so, uh, what's the plan here? I can, I can do the little, uh, again, into this terminal here and get some readouts. Do we notice that the power goes out in the ship below us? Um, it doesn't yet. Basically, time right because okay. you all went up. So okay. I would say you don't see it yet. Mm, okay. Don't see it yet. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll okay. definitely hear it. You just don't know yet. Well, Plus, uh, how how far below us is the five stories? Okay, so like 50, 55, 50, 60, 55 or so. Like, like you can see it down there. Um, like all the turned up dirt and them working. Um, because you're standing on that like lattice type scaffolding, right? That steel graded, uh, floor scaffolding. Well, uh, hopefully it, it's not too bad, right? Like, um, well, I don't, never fucked around with something this big before. Uh, but, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was helping my dad back, uh, well, back home. We did, uh, we did some work on, uh, on augers and, uh, backhoes and those got a dump mechanism. So we just got to figure out how to, to activate the dump mechanism and it will just spit it out. No, I, I just got to find where that is, because, I mean, surely they're not going to have a fail-safe just in case something falls into the mechanism. So keep your eyes out for any kind of panel box. I got a maintenance jack to help, but if I can't find it, I can't work on it. I mean, let me uh, let me get out to, to this terminal here and see if there's, like, a schematics or uh, or something. Maybe there's, like, a reverse button I can type in the yeah, yeah. reverse enter. Right. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> it's running on DOS. Okay, so, um, okay. <laughs> Listen, it was made in the 80s. It's running on dust. You, it is running on dust. You may, you might even, we see Ben maybe uh, pan a flash like, like down this little alcove to see if like, you see a switch or anything. Mm. Professor Barden, you try to use the terminal. Um, yeah. You need, cle- uh, you're a scientist. You would have uh, clearance uh, to come down here. So I would say you type your clearance information in and uh, it pops up. Uh, it shows you the same schematic as down below, mm-hmm. uh, right, uh, where this there is this kind of red, dense area. Um, you can see from this terminal the electrical damage that has been done based on, like, the fire or the explosion. Like, you can just see the areas that are no longer connected, right, um, that, that, that aren't feeding information. Most of that is really reactor. Uh, the drill seems to be what this piece of... Uh, debris is lodged in it's the actual drill itself mm. is there any kind of like power buttons or like yes. a reverse or um, is there you, functionality it's here? gonna take yes um oh i was gonna make this easy but i'll just use another corruption because i just got it great thanks it more difficult. perfect there is uh there are options are you wanting to turn the power off or are you wanting to um are you wanting to like reverse the drill, like reverse its uh, the, direction? The platform we're on is it attached to the drill, or is it like scaffolding on the wall? What's the what's the situ- what's the uh, situation? Don't give here? her any ideas. Don't get. <laughs> what am I standing on? You are standing on a piece of graded mm-hmm. metal, yeah. right? That's about six foot by six foot. That has a small terminal and mm-hmm. Ben and you on it, which is attached um, to what? Which is attached to the side of the exterior of the actual like reactor. the casing of the of the reactor the casing or the drill? of okay. the re- of the reactor basically right so you've got um, okay this is good for you to know in the center mm-hmm. is the drill itself right uh, mm-hmm. that pulls everything up the secondary layer is the set of electrical things that manages and processes the radioactive material that's being mined mm. out of this then there's the third layer that keeps that radioactive material from getting to all of you. Right, and that's what keeps all of the general electric stuff functioning. So it's actually three massive layers sure. deep. This thing, and then when you get to the center, it opens up, right? Because the drill's attached all the way to the top, all the way down to keep it stable and structural. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're so, we're yeah. we're we're not at you're drill. On the, at, yeah. You're on the outside. So, you, I would say that deep. It's deep. Yeah. 
50, 60, 70 feet deep. Okay. So he's, he's, he's pinging around in there. And he, I, uh, 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 Ben, that's what it is. Ben, um, okay, so I have access to the terminal. I have a stop button. I got a forward, which we know that's not working. I'm pretty sure I got a reverse. Um, what, what do you want me to hit here? This is your, your wheelhouse. Oh, no, 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 no. You know how, that's what I'm asking. What are you wanting to do? Because there is no button. You can't turn it off from here. Perfect. I say, I, I'm pretty sure I, I think I could get it to go forward or back or maybe okay. turn it off. But what, what do you think I should do, be doing here? You don't find like a dump mechanism at all? Uh, I kind of, I'm kind of just typing in words and hit enter and seeing what happens here. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly yeah. honest with you. There is a manual, um, like release or dump uh, lever, I guess you could say. Like maybe you, maybe you're like, okay, scientist, slide over. Like you start looking at yeah, the move. machinery, right? Yeah, it's no, like it's, got, yeah, it's, <laughs> um, a, it's a green you print. Look at yourself. You can look at it. <laughs> Uh, and you get very close to the screen and you, you see the same things. Um, you begin looking for it. You know what you're looking for on the schematic and you see it. The kind of um, release valve that is all over this mining colony to release pressurized air and those kind of things. It's They're all over the place. In this case, you're just wanting to what release the drill from the ground from... Oh, I'm, I'm just trying to basically have it like dump any, any debris. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you have to stop it. All right. Yeah. There is a lever, a mechanism, but it is, you're going to have to go into the interior of the drill. Um, so you're gonna have to cut all the way to the center layer. And there's like a, there's a, I would say a five foot piece of circular scaffolding that goes all, it like circles all the way up the interior of the drill. More than likely what your friends walked to get to the top. Right, they crawled out from the hollowed center, remember? They walked that piece of scaffolding from the interior of the drill all the way up to the very, very top. Ah. Oh. Certainly feels like it was poorly designed. What are we looking at here? Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck it, let's, let's reverse it. At this, this point, it'll just spin it back out, right? As opposed to drilling it down, it'll spin back out. That's and whatever's inside... What I'm thinking, yeah, sure. Should... Yeah catch and uh well if it rotates up enough we can just pull it out yeah and the worst case scenario what you do is you hit reverse forward reverse and it will eventually chop it and it will fall you know Rob, yeah that Rob. sounds that sounds totally safe this sounds totally safe um, <laughs> i mean I we have a see if there's like any like roll cage walls we have a 10 10 mile long drill that's broken churned up that's drilling into a reactor inside of a spaceship full of alien bugs I'm pretty sure back and forth is the least of our worries right this second. Also, upstairs Pardon. is full and with water. You, uh, you've been with the company for a long time, right? Yeah, too many years, you'd say. No, I'm, 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 I don't have a kind of clout or money to get into a ship like that, but, uh. Yeah, me neither. Why would they just want those bodies and not that multi-million dollar ship? Uh. Just, they just want, he just only wanted the bodies. Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't know, man. But I mean, like, okay, let's think about it. I don't want well, to. No one, there's no one around here. It's just you and me. I don't yeah. want to sound like a, a kook, right? But uh, sure. That was an alien, right? We agree. There's an alien spider. I mean, I I, I, ain't, I ain't seen anything else to argue that, right? right? Like that was that was a big fucking spider. And that and that alien spider egg came out of a crate and there was a bunch of other crates yo was that like a baby spider i'm pretty sure that was a baby spider i think it just hatched and it oh, might have died damn. maybe it was the radiation that's why i gave the kid a little little tracker in case something happens but i mean listen i don't want to break your heart i know you got a soft spot for the kid but i'm pretty sure of anyone given the predicament we're in i think we're the safest people here and i'm pretty sure everyone down there is gonna get eaten by an alien if I had to guess. You Can hear you? somewhere off in the distance, the commander go, oh. <laughs> ship goes off below your feet. And now the power's out, which means. And it goes, that was the only power down there. It yeah. is now dark below your feet. You can that see nothing. 100% means they're about to get eaten by an alien. So I How feel like. How far up is, is the, is the wall, right. like uh, of the wall of this drill? You mean the, to the very top? Yeah, like could I, could I lob my, my glow sticks over? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Totally. There. I would say it's just railing. You're like leaning down, looking over, um, if right. nothing else. Then um, so I'll snap. Yeah. I'll snap all three of my glow sticks, and I'll I'll chuck them down probably in yeah. like a 15 foot area around them. Yeah, you toss them down. One of them lands on a, another floor below. You just happens to like catch on one, but it lights that area. And then two yeah. more fall all the way down. One pings on the hull of the vessel. Um, you see it kind of roll off. And when it does, you see that there's some some like movement um, from the doctor and um, Jake. Maybe you even see him light up the, <laughs> he like presses the, and he goes boop, boop, boop. And you can see it way down there, 50 foot below you, yeah. just the green light on his face. And then another one hits the ground and it gives you some, I would say very low light at 50 feet um, that down there, something has gone wrong with the vessel. Uh, if the power's out, then the cryopods are also going to be turned off. Hey! Hey! You guys all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Eve, Eve is very much too uh, focused on restoring, uh, rerouting power to these cryopods. What? Uh, what happened? What happened? He tripped. And uh, Vince just points at one of the soldiers. Darkness. Not, not even it's, sure. It's, if... it's dark. It's dark. It's black. I can't see anything. We're trying to fix it. All right, look, I, I'm. I, I should. Uh, I should probably get down there. Uh, unless, I mean, they, they might fix it. I don't know. I, you, you know the doc better than I do, right? Is she, is she, is she goes. She can. She can. She handle this. Oh, I don't know. She, I think she's crazy. Well, Barton, they say that a lot about you too. Well, I mean. All right. Well, uh, let's let's wrap this up then, real quick. We'll see if we can spin and spit this thing back out, and. Uh, yeah, oh this, shit! This, if we can't, we gotta get down there fast. Let's let's do this fast, because if not, then those cryo tanks will go down. I mean, if we say we unplugged them, they had about an hour, right? So, I mean, I can divert power. It's part. It's exactly what I'm. I'm, I'm a parts changer, and and literally, it's built in my kit. I I, I am designed to divert power. It's okay. It's okay, it's listen, listen, Ben, <laughs> Ben, Ben. Let me tell you something real quick. Okay, listen. You got promoted before we got down here to lead engineer. Now, I have been here for too long, and we discussed already, don't demote yourself. The company's going to demote it for you. You're a lead engineer. You're not just a parts changer anymore. <laughs> I want you to understand that. Listen. Get in there. Lead Barton, engineer. Yeah. If we just saw a baby spider, yeah. alien thing. Right. I think a big, giant daddy spider. Yeah, right now. Probably going to fucking kill me. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is we're the same. That's what I was trying to say before the lights went out, is that I'm just going to assume that they're all dead. No offense, the kid's cool, I like him. He's a smart little guy, and I'm really gonna miss that M3314 transponder that I had down there. But uh, I'm just we have, gonna we have assume- a bunch of, we, have, we got a bunch of those. I'm gonna assume they're all dead, because there's crates of aliens is what I'm picturing. Well, we crates have crates of, of, of just what the sponder thing that you just said, whatever the yeah. fuck that is. We got a bunch of them. Yeah. We don't have a bunch of the, 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 of the people living down there. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to be living long, is what I'm going to say. Anyway, let All me right, hit the um, reverse button. Let's just, if we can get this out of here, maybe. So, to hit that reverse button, yeah, because uh, I used a bit of corruption, uh -huh. one of you, it takes both of you. Mm -hmm. Professor, you're going to have to man this comm state or this station, mm -hmm. and set it up to release this, like, uh, mechanism that somebody else has to pull. So somebody's gonna have to slip in at least to the second, like the second core, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, to get in there, um, I would guess that's gonna be Ben to actually pull the lever. So, Professor, you can roll a com tech, and old Ben can roll a heavy machinery to see if you can slip it. It's tight. You gonna push? Yeah, Dot. Remind yeah. me, how do I push in this game? So how do you push? When you push, you can re-roll every die that doesn't make it mm -hmm. um, except for your stress die i think is how that works i'm gonna have to double check that um and you take a stress so take your stress and then push okay which means you can re-roll them hey wowzer yeah. wowzer well i think okay. i'm not dead yet folks you're not dead yet that was a really good roll okay so jake got four hits on his rolls and um nobody rolled for nobody rolled a panic and axe got one all they needed is one so i'm going to give jake a couple extra things here that i think he'll benefit from as we move forward so we see jake slip into this very tight space um he shimmies in and has to kind of go around a corner professor 
Um, he disappears, and you can still hear him kind of mm -hmm. grinding um, and catching on a couple things, maybe even grumbling to <clears> himself. <throat> you type in all the codes, click, 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 hit it, it releases. You see it, then. It kind of, like, comes out of the wall, and then, the, it like, the lever itself drops down. It's one of those levers you have to, like, pump, 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 right? And release. So basically what you're doing is releasing pressure and so that the uh, the mechanism can spin. And we hear it. It doesn't turn off, but it stops grinding. It has to, to reverse, right? Um, and there's a moment of silence before the storm. The metal piece caught there. Hovers just momentarily as Bob, I mean, sorry, Ben, pump and releases. And the drill begins to reverse itself. The large chunk falls all the way down, making a very loud noise as it clatters five stories down the inside of a drill, like a lodged piece in a vacuum cleaner. As it begins to move backwards, it begins to up, undo dirt a different direction. Um, and down on the floor, you can see it kind of pushing dirt the opposite way, some falling back in. And uh, do you leave it going in reverse order? Or are you going to stop it? What is the plan? Because it reversed and it dislodged the piece. I'll well, it's just much. it's just got to be on, right? With the reason that the reactor, well, like we were dead in 13 hours because the reactor was off or it was broken. It was broken. It needed to release basically energy, okay. which is kind of what you just did. And you can kind of hear everything, almost like hydraulics, like. Um, I... <clears throat> I don't. I don't think we should turn this the other way. Like it's just got to be on. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. You're the lead engineer. I'm just here to help. I'm here to push buttons. You need two bodies. Body number two. So. Follow right, me. Well, I'm on my way up. All right. Stay, uh, be careful. And we see you slip back out. And the two of you go down. Your plan's to go down, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Hit the button. So far, so good. You think you did it? The drill's not actively drilling anything, but it is on, if that makes sense. It's kind of in a stasis. It's like a Windows hold screen. Um, and uh, you wait, because the elevator is all the way at the top with a commando that is delivering three unopened containers uh, to the mining colony. And the camera goes down, following a piece of junk that has dislodged itself, the wing of a vessel that it... <laughs> but dug up out of the dirt and we see our doctor our commando doug and vincey jake jake gents um um i have to figure that one out uh, uh yeah that vince. doesn't work vince um vince jake who bake. you know who knows yeah bake um uh we see you all still actively trying to 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 um put put power back to these things and you're you're rewiring and this takes time and you hear something the reactor makes a different noise and then the clattering of a big huge piece of metal begins to fall one story two story three story every time getting louder and louder and um because i'm a horrible horrible person and because somebody gave me permission this piece of metal smashes to the ground down here. It kicks up a ton of dust and dirt. Um, it's hard to see, especially in the dark. And now there's like green glow sticks everywhere. So you can only see the silhouette of everybody and the small bits of flashlight that are pinging off the dust in the air. As things begin to settle, you see that this big uh, chunk of metal shattered, splintered, some might say. Um, and as Vince, you turn with your flashlight uh and, I, and check yeah. your awesome check it things. yeah you're down a body something's not moving and you turn it is the doctor a large piece of shrapnel from this explosion has shot itself out and has cut itself through her side um kind of almost slicing her like you might a tomato uh, she sits off to the side but what catches your eye is not the giant uh, scrape in her side or the fact that um, she's kind of sitting there rather motionless is the fact that she's not bleeding blood anyways but a strange milky white substance as it pours and drips to the ground matching the sound of water coming in somewhere from the outside underwater setting um, you're going to take a point of stress have you ever seen 
a synthetic life before? Maybe you've only ever heard that they no. exist? Never yep. seen it. No. Um, no. <laughs> so you can... Is, is and, she like, is she in two pieces right now? Or is, uh, is this... I would say uh, she's cut from the belly button out. So she's not entirely, but her like side is half open. And is she... It's like nearly had the snake, but... We turned her yeah. into a Pez dispenser is what <laughs> got, we did. Got it. Is is she still standing? Is she on the ground and not moving? Like I would say, she she can speak. Uh, doctor, uh, taking damage as a synth is a little different. Um, it's mm-hmm. not cut through any of her neurological stuff, though. She's not moving, which tells you maybe there was some damage to the spinal column. That's hard for a kid to like totally understand. Uh, okay. But she's not. It's not picking up her movement, which tells you she's not actively moving. But she does. Like, look at you. Her eyes are open. Maybe for the first time you hear a strange, like, ooh, sound of gears turning or something. It's kind of strange. What? 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 Are, are you okay? Um, and Vince, like, slowly approaches her. That's not... Would, would Vince really know, at even still at this point? Because, I don't know, maybe he thinks, as an 11-year-old especially, that maybe organs in your stomach area would actually bleed like white liquid or something like that like is he absolutely convinced that she's not i don't i'm not sure that he would be unless there's other i was about to say i would think if you feel like you're innocent enough not to really understand um you probably run over to help her just like you would help anybody else's who organs are falling out of their body that's what Um, i do but (laughs) right and as you get close um whatever light that you've got you kind of look and it still doesn't feel right yeah like we, you've pricked your finger before. People bleed red, um, and her organs, as you pick them up, they feel like a vacuum cleaner too. You know, if, if you like try to help her, like put your hands on it to put pressure. Doctor, you're in a state of sh- shock a little bit at the moment. Uh, the piece of shrapnel cut all the way through. It's now sticking into the back wall where it like sliced you um, with that much pressure. Um, but you too are trying to hold what you thought were organs. In. Um, if you could take stress, you would. But for some reason, you seem and feel very calm. I think that um, Vince would actually recognize a, a almost like a sense of confusion, but more of a a bewilderment, like a I don't understand, kind of on her face. And she's kind of holding her hands there. And after a very extended pause, yeah. looks down. Well, that's not supposed to do that. I, uh, uh, we have, uh, how can I, I mean, I was going to say, we have to get you up to a doctor, but you are uh, a doctor, right? I, yes, but, um, I don't know what Vince turns and and checks where Doug Dimmodome and his lackeys are. You turn and maybe even have to peer your head out of the, um, the vessel. Mm -hmm. You see Doug is currently, um, caught under rubble when this machine mechanism went the opposite direction it kicked a lot of dirt back right it mm-hmm. kind of unsettled everything and he he's like my legs my legs help me you idiot help <laughs> this me this whole time <laughs> um, yeah this whole time um Wonderful. you know and and this commando's like sir the rock's too heavy i can't move it by myself um and he's he kind of grabs me he's like don't you leave me down here you idiot uh, as he kind of like tosses him to the side and there's this, they're having this whole <laughs> moment moment uh, yeah. down okay. here and in this and Vince, as you go to turn back to, to, to maybe say something, behind you, the sound of release. Cryotube opening. Uh, oh. Your mother's tube pops and the lid snaps open and there is, you know, what's left of um, kind of frozen air pours out. You hear her... <gasps> take a deep breath as she kind of stumbles forward and catches herself and she looks around and the first thing that she sees is your father of course um and then she looks to the left and sees you and she she goes no 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 
No, this isn't how it was supposed to happen. Where is everybody? Why are you down here? The the reactor blew up or something. Are you okay? We need uh, the dad's over there. She's really hurt. Um. She goes. Did they make it to the surface? Did they tell you? Yeah, yeah. They made it up. They they didn't really. Um, she said you should have on a mask if that's the case. Why do they need a mask? She looks over, sees a synth, takes a point of stress, which she's already under an extreme amount. She kind of rubs her eyes and she, she, like a horror movie for her, kind of goes, uh, steps back and she goes, there's a, a biological o- organism, um, a fungus. It, it, it uh, makes people sick. Um, oh, fungus. She points to the front of the vessel where it's just like growing everywhere. Oh. I and was about to say the xenomorph as she points to the dissected. <laughs> oh, and she goes, oh, she goes, yes, whatever we do, we cannot open those pods. And another well, corruption point gets used as your father's pod auto opens because there's no power. Mm-hmm. She turns and she goes, no, 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 this cannot be happening. She grabs you. Your mother grabs you, Jake, and she says, you have to get out of here. And she looks up, the elevator's coming down. As soon as it's down here, I want you to take it to the top. And I want you to close that steel door behind you. Do you understand me? The, the, the bridge is broken. We're, we're stuck. She looks... hopeless. Mom? Absolutely hopeless. And she looks over to where your father's cryopod door is open. The sound of the elevator reaches the bottom. Ben and Professor... You step off to see that there's new activity, though darker, in the vessel. And as you peer in, you can see as Jake's father takes a deep breath of life again. Uh, he comes to, looks around and goes, Oh! Oh! No! No! And he looks right at your mom and she says, I'm sorry, I tried! I tried! And from his chest, you see something begin to press on the underside of his skin. A small baby's fist, if you would, as it pushes and press. And he's trying to keep it in. He goes, you have to run. And he looks over and sees you and he goes, Jake. Dad. Or he, he goes, he goes, Vince. Why? Dad? Are you here? No. And something breaks his chest open. A small creature. Uh, you can see it crunches through his rib cage. All of you witness it and take a point of stress, except for the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, a, this little creature has tiny teeth and a kind of round shapen head and it, (laughs) as it comes out of its chest, um, you can see it, it looks around at all of you, takes every one of you in. Now, of course, Doug, (laughs) Doug Dividal, nor the commandos see this. She goes, who's got a gun? Shoot it! Shoot it! Uh, Vince, like just as a reaction, takes the motion sensor and presses it. Bow, 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 bow. And when you do, it scares the creature. <laughs> and it shoots out of its chest, down its body and across the room. It scutters across the floor like a lizard or a gecko. It moves at quick pace. And with the dark space and the dust in the air, you lose sight of it. Your father's body hangs there, still strapped in. Massive gaping hole in his chest. Your mother falls to her knees and she looks at all of you and she goes, we have to go now. Uh, What about dad? Uh, Medically speaking, I don't think that that is a survivable wound. She goes, we came down here to see what was wrong. We didn't realize that the reactor had hit something. When we got down here, we found a bunch of cases and one of the scientists, he opened one. Something hatched, it crawled out, and it, it, it latched itself to this man's face. Vince just walks past his mom and goes up to his dad and, like, grabs his dad's hand and shakes him. Dad? He kind of, he, he loosely dangles there. And then turns back to his mom. Says, we can't, we can't go anywhere. The... The bridge is broken. What do we do? I don't know. But if we can get to the other side of that door, it can't get to us, right? Yeah. How many more were there down here? We only opened one case. 
when it attacked him, and she kind of points to her husband, he said he started feeling strange. It, it, it just fell off his face. And we didn't think anything about it. And we were trapped. And There's a bit of an issue. The corporate rep had the other crate sent up. She says, you mean the other? They weren't They're closed, opened. but yes, they are up top. So perhaps down here is maybe a little bit more stable for us to survive in, at least temporarily. Wait a minute. You said something about the fungus. What does it do? I don't know entirely. It started to make us sick. It, it wasn't anything at first. We just thought it was a part of the uh, radiation leaking out, affecting things. We didn't know. And sick then, how? Feeling ill. It only happened within the last few days. Fever? Or we something said, else. Um, bleeding from the orifices. Okay, that explains it then. From up um, top. She says, did you, did you find them? We sent four to the top and they never returned. And then we sent four more and he was attacked. And it's all just a great... Yes, we found them. Me. But Why did you come down here? They were dead and the reactor had about 13 hours before it was going to destroy everything. We had we no have... choice. She says, have you fixed the reactor? The reactor, I think, is... She looks and... around. Uh, yeah. I would say that both Ben and Professor uh, Barden are there. You kind of have witnessed all of this. The debris or whatever was inside, I imagine, part of the ship when it hit, I we heard metal, so I'm, sub I'm assuming that they were able to fix whatever was wrong with it, but the problem still remains that we're cut off from the rest of the colony. She says, well, maybe that's a good thing. If this is as bad as you think it is, then yes, I would agree. And she says, and when did we get a synth on, on the colony? She kind of looks around for, an, for somebody to have that answer. I... Nobody don't. know? Uh, I, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but, um, I feel like the fact that, uh, there's three cards of a doctor is probably the least of our problems right now. You just said that there's alien spores, which we've seen, that make you bleed out of your eyes, and there's an alien that exploded out of your husband's chest, and that there's more uh, of them, and the crates are upstairs, and there's more aliens. W what? You, I feel like you, robots are the least of our worries right now. She goes, you, you said that there was another. You saw it get sick? What? And she looks at the doctor. Like, she just put that piece together that you said that. They were all sick. All of the ones that were sent to the top. And I had observed that there were the two remaining, which was you and yeah. your husband. You also had uh, two commandos that got ill as well. One of them was spitting blood. Right. Um... Indiv one one individual did get sick at one point, but we assumed it was radiation exposure. Um, um, if I recall, one of the scientists? they're down here somewhere, maybe. No, they are locked in the med bay on the other oh, side of right. the bridge. Yep. So how do we, what do we do? Well, first and foremost, there's got to be probably... A couple of spacesuits here. I would recommend jumping into them, or however many, if any, are intact. I guess maybe a couple. Um, they. She kind of goes over. It's as if they were down here two weeks. They know this vessel very well. At least they did. She goes mm -hmm. over to the lockers and she says, "We took most of the suits. Some people's clothing were rather destroyed after we healed our injuries. There was the secondary explosion, of course, um, which you know they had to contend with. So like all the medical supplies were yeah. gone. Pretty much everything." Um, she looks over to Ben, who has been stoically quiet, but he's very clearly uh, uh, the handyman, right? He's the roughneck. Um, and she goes, you fixed it, the reactor? I mean, we, 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 we got it back on. Uh, what did, what so happened? No, no explosion. We came down here. Um, whatever was lodged in there, it, uh, it fell 
farther, and when it did, it, it caused a massive explosion. We were up there, and she points to, like, a couple stories up. Uh, she's like, we were up there on a platform when it went off. A lot of us uh, were heavily injured. A few of us took massive falls. We used the ship as a home base for a while and tried to heal up, but with the amount of radiation poisoning we all underwent, uh, it's kind of a miracle we're alive. And then when he became infected and she gestures, we all made a decision to lock him away. Uh, how, how, lo how long? How long were you in, in, in cryo? Um, they said it would take them four days to get to the top, so I would guess about four days. I locked myself in, um, put myself under as soon as they went up, just to assure nothing bad happened. How long would you say you were down here before you went into cryo? see we came down here I two guess weeks, about a right? week and a half yeah they were down here two four two weeks. weeks so about a week and a half they were down here before they made the decision to like try so they were to only the in cryo to the oh okay yeah but she was only in cryo four days of those yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna move to the side of the hyperpod and um and pull open the um it's like a small storage spot but they basically put meds in it and yeah. um pull out the uh the hydration pills cool uh and i'm gonna chuck the bottle over to the mom um uh, you, you suck them all down. All right, you, you're gonna need it because, well, we're, we're just gonna need help. You, 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 your son said you were a, a were you a doctor, a scientist? Yes, I'm an anthropologist. What the fuck is that? What 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 do you, what, what do, you do? I, I studied people, the cultures of people, and I'm here with my husband. She gestures across the way. He was the real scientist. That's well, real fucking helpful right now. Um, Hold on. I, 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 wait, wait, ben, wait. can you fix the power to the cryopods? Because we still have four unknown people that could come out at any moment, and they could be a danger to the rest of us. Yeah, I, I, I can fix. I can fix that. That's easy. That's that's the easy part. I'm not Let's, that worried about that. I'm. You should more be. Worried. They have two minutes before they did. Um, uh, Vince, run in, near near the near the elevator. There's a black box. What? That was that was kicked off. It's we might be able to do something to to help the. What is? Did you know you were a synth? No, but that's not something that we need to discuss right now. You need to get Vince. those cryopods back on. Get, Walks get, away, get the box. looking for a black, like head down with this motion sensor gun, just clicking it, uh, almost like he used to click his lighter. Yep, click, um, click, and click. just looking for a black box as he's in shock. Okay, uh, it's it's something that, that I, I brought down, um, and it's it's on my person. It's um, yeah. my compression suit, and I can compression lock her body, so her organs aren't falling out, even if she's a synth. Those parts are still needed. That's great. Okay, I... I'm gonna go to work on on the the rest of the cryo tubes because I don't I don't need any of those other things coming out. Yeah, you slip it on, and when you when you hit it, it basically like. <sighs> It sucks against your skin, uh, Doctor, okay. and, and immediately it, you're not sewn up, but it keeps your innards from falling yeah. out. Um, and so you can, I would say there's definitely, the whole right side of your body is probably not as usable as the left side yes. of your body is, but you are able to move uh, to some degree, at least in, in small. Okay. Okay, I feel like I'm a crazy person right now. What is your question then? You said, uh, Mrs. Vince's mom, you said, that uh, there was a scientist who was duking around with these eggs and something sucked his face. Um, yeah, and then oh, what, that and then what happened? What happened after that? He, he was fine for a while. Uh -huh. um, like 24 hours or so. Uh -huh. And then he started telling us that he wasn't feeling well. He said right. he had um, chest pains and yeah. um, uh, pressure in, in his gut. And we thought maybe he, he was next with the, the stuff. So we didn't know what was going to happen. And so we just... And what happened? Uh, something came out of him, and it's in we the locked ship him somewhere. in. We locked him directly in cryostasis, and then he just came out. Oh wait! So you're saying your husband was the one who was duking around and got his face sucked? Yes. Okay. Is that? She kind of puts her eyes down. <laughs> the... That yes, that is him. No, no, it's not not that. Is that the same one? The one that the doctor was taking into pot like Frankenstein? That's the original, yes. The original yes. one. I imagine it's the same one that okay. infected It, it, it ran husband. off or, or just kind of like died uh, and fell off his face and we just left it there. We, we... Okay. Doctor, write that down. Sucks your face, dies, you explode out of your belly. Okay. I don't need to write it down. Great. Uh, sorry. You got... Ben. 
Dr. Brain. Jake. You're like, I got, I can fix power. Power I can do. And you can see they have done a shite job of trying to do the rewiring of electrical directly into the generator for these cryopods. Um, and you come behind them with a success and you finish up what they needed. They didn't even have the right grounded wire. They were going to totally electrocute these people. Um, and you very quickly fix it. But you rolled two panic die yeah. um, on your stress. So here's what had happened. As you're fixing this up and you you plug this massive uh, plug directly into kind of the last of the power box or power generator on this ship, you all see the cryotubes of these four people. Ooh, the emergency lights go off on them. But Jake, you see something out of the corner of your eye. That same slithery black thing scutters past, uh, maybe even behind you and you turn. And there's a moment of panic. So you have to make... A panic roll. Okay. How do I do that? Yeah. So uh, I believe there's actually a panic button on your character sheet. Is there? Yes. At the very top where it says roll buttons, there's a panic button. You should be able to click it. It'll auto roll. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we are going to have to go to the panic table. You rolled a 10. Of Under your I handouts, do. there's a panic table. Um, 10. Freeze. You are frozen by fear or stress for a single round, losing your next slow action. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you increase by one. Perfect. So there's nobody around you, so nobody increases. But there's a fight or flight mode. And in this case, um, it's not flight that kicks in. You freeze for a moment. Maybe it won't notice me um, if I don't move. And there's a moment uh, of you freezing as you see it scutter up the wall um, and kind of dive uh, out of a broken window and hit the ground uh, and begin running out. It clatters up the side of the reactor and disappears into a small hole. So my concern is, where are the other crates? They're up top. Doug had them sent up, which means that, well, they're still closed, so there's that, but... We have one less commando down here with us to help us. Is, is Doug with. still trapped under rubble? You come out. Doug now is trying to get up, and he, he very clearly has a sprained ankle. And he goes, doctor, doctor, this is a medical emergency. My ankle. And he's kind of, like, dragging his ankle. Uh, it was crushed under a rock. Um, and I he see. points to it. Barden kicks him in the ankle. Ah, ah, and he kind of jumps in and goes, you, you can't do that. I'm going to do it again. Come on. The, okay. the, the, hey, hey, the clips are full of aliens. The guy had an alien explode out of his chest. Commando oh, okay. pulls a gun on Barden. Yeah, pull a gun. Get the aliens. You see the alien? The guy exploded what out aliens? of his chest. The giant stop, alien spider stop. and the alien egg sac and the... Look at the guy. Look at the guy. You moved the whole thing up there. It's full of aliens. There is a xenomorph that is actively moving around, not dead, around here somewhere. Yeah. Please sit down and I will look at your ankle. What he kind of looks around. He doesn't actively believe all of you. And he goes, well, we, we still have some crates to move. So don't think that this is time for a break. And he looks at the commander and oh. goes, hit that button and bring your friend back down. We've got okay. those three bodies to get moved. You gotta, you gotta phone. You gotta walkie talkie or whatever. Call your friend. Bring the crates back down. Leave the crates here. We go upstairs. Crates are full of aliens. He kind of radios over. He goes, um, uh, was the commander over? We're over. Um, and uh, somebody's like, hur, 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 back to him. Uh, you can't quite understand it because I they say commando uh, BS. And um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you hear the elevator kick in. I <laughs> Yes, my commando BS. Uh, you hear the elevator kick in and it starts heading back down from the top. It's going to take it a few minutes. As all of you are left kind of standing here, uh, you bind up his ankle. It is a minor sprain, Doctor. It is like uh, somebody scrapes their knee on the yeah. ground kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but the commando begins um, dragging one of these crates, these bigger crates, out and over to where the elevator will land. I feel like there's no one here in what I'm one saying. The ones that had bodies in it. Are you yeah. not understanding? I'm speaking English, right? Still speaking I have, English? Yes. There's, there's literally aliens. Okay. We then know it's all aliens. the more reason for us to get these innocent people out of here. The crates you moved were full of aliens. Who's to say? They're not full of aliens. We don't know that. You're making Doctor, were the aliens in the crates? Accusations. It is All likely. Is it is likely that they were infected. Oh, I'm sorry. However, I wasn't talking to you, Doctor. How, I was talking to the anthropologist who opened the alien crates. 
She did not open the alien. We crates. didn't. We didn't know. We thought maybe it was food. It Ma'am, Wayland Utani stamp on it. Ma'am, was the crate full of aliens? At the end of the day, it, it was. It did have some kind of alien life. Thank you. So the crates are full of aliens. If one's full of aliens, why risk the rest of them? She Leave the aliens in the alien ship. ship. She goes, Doctor. We agreed with you. It's why we didn't open anymore, especially after the yeah, first attack. We agree. Clip on and his gun bunnies, they don't agree, and they're just bringing aliens upstairs. So what would you like to do about it? They're the ones with the guns. Leave the aliens here is what I'd like to do, and then go upstairs where the yes, aliens are. Yes, what she would like okay. to do and what he would like to do doesn't coincide clearly, and we don't have the guns. Doug Dimadome uh, adjusts his clip on and he says, I'm going to make a final decision. We will bring the bodies and the people up, and as per your request, in case it is a... Uh, issue we will send the other smaller crates back down doctor leaving them here but the people and these bodies are clearly wanted by Waylon yutani and he points to a stamp on them and he says this is a return delivery stamp that never made it and my career could sure use a boost clip so on. these people are going upstairs clip on let me ask you a question man no. to man here no oh uh, are those bodies frozen he says they are currently dead bodies that are frozen. frozen. Right, okay. Yes. So, sorry, Vince. This man here with the exploded out chest was also frozen in a cryotube, and then as soon as he wasn't... He was also alive. These people are dead. They've been long dead. How do you know that they can't live in a dead body and explode out when they're not frozen? I agree. They've been here for 10 years, frozen. Who knows how much longer the case is going to stay frozen before... The other problem is, is that there were readings of life of some kind when I checked the cryo tubes in the first place. Which says to me either the people are alive or there's something inside there that is alive. Vince can can I um, his motion sensor again? Can I oh, can yes. I can I react okay. like out of out of like fear, frustration and stress? Yes. You um, sure can. I would say your turn of like being frozen while this thing's gutted off is long gone. I uh I want to move up behind the guard. Yeah. Um the one guard down here with uh with the rifle. And I want to put the Watatsumi up against his back. The okay. bolt gun. The bolt gun. Uh, yeah, he's still, this commando's kind of shaking and he, he's overbite near the elevator. And so we'll say you kind of sneak around and you stick it up next to his back. Um, he goes, oh, oh. All sweaty and like shaky. <laughs> Drop the fucking gun, guy. Because this will punch through your armor and will hit Doug um, right in the back. Uh, Doug, Doug, Doug. Uh, Doug looks over and he goes, hey. You you can't pull a gun on security. Eat my cock, Doug. I don't care. Vince will look between look at his dad in the cryo case, and then look at uh, Ben, and then look at Doug. And Vince will jump and try to basically smack Doug over the back of the head with the motion sensor. Oh my God. Okay, this is perfect. The the, the commander goes, S -s Sir, I have no choice. I I have no choice, Sir. Uh, and he takes his gun off and begins to put it on the ground, and we get to see. Vince, make a just <laughs> an attack. Totally okay. my forte. <laughs> totally your forte. All right, yeah. Vince. Um, this is this is gonna be kind of odd because it's not really a weapon, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So I'm just gonna have you make a straight combat, a close combat roll. Okay. Close combat roll. Now this is on Doug, y'all. Yeah. Who's not? Do wearing, I get? Would, yeah. Do I get any bonus? For I would waiting say for the take, moment that Doug turns to yeah, take a take a bonus die for like him being distracted. Okay. Let's see how you do, and remember you can always push to reroll. <laughs> would you okay. like to push to reroll? Now, when you, when you push, basically what's going to happen is um, you can reroll everything that wasn't a success or failure. I mean, you got so there's no roll. point to re-roll. You got a success. You just got yeah. awful failures. You are failures. gonna have to roll panic too. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that makes way, sense. Even, like I can't push <laughs> to succeed. get rid of my panic. So yeah. No. Oh, no, you're stuck. You with cannot. That. Okay. Only your regular yeah, so die can you. There. I mean, that amount of panic makes sense for Vince. <laughs> there's there's oh, this God. moment of like, oh my God, everything I love is gonna get shot. Ben's gonna die. Mom's gonna die. Dad's already That's dead. Cool. This like this like kid mm -hmm. panic sets in, and you look down at this thing. You pull the trigger. A moment of panic sits in. I am going to have you make a panic roll. Okay. Because you see a new dot. It's moving up and away through the reactor from all of you, at least at the moment. But there's something new here. 
that hatched from your father. And just the panic of everybody yelling at each other and, and Jake saying, I don't dick whatever, blah, blah. Um, you rear back and smash Doug on the back of the head with this. Now, you rolled two panic rolls. And because <laughs> I'm a very, very mean GM. Yay. You would hear the sound of his head crack open. Doug falls to his knees, and all of you see his eyes get wide. He falls to his knees, and he kind of turns around at you. His nose begins to bleed as he kind of leans forward, and he smashes to the ground. Doug is dead, killed by Vince. Vince, I need you to make a panic roll. Beautiful. Uh, should I add another die of stress before I make that panic roll? Yes, that you matter? should, because okay. I'm sure that you've never killed anybody before. <laughs> well, there was that. No. <laughs> All right, I got okay, an eight. You rolled an eight. Let's see where we'll leave you here. Panic table says you start to tremble uncontrollably. Controllably. All skill rolls, <laughs> right? Using agility, suffer a negative two. So we're going to say until you get out of the reactor, at least at the start of the next game, you are in okay. a state of constant trembling. You just killed a man the commando sees this happen but he has a bolt gun to his back the elevator is close now 10 stories yeah, back up back up move over story. there I'm, move I'm, I'm oh, gonna, okay man okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna take i'm gonna take that rifle from you if that's okay i'm just gonna I'm yeah gonna you hold, pick I'm it up hold, off the ground where on, he dropped it i'm gonna hold on to that as the only person who's not a robot or a murderer i'm gonna hold the gun your so mom sad. looks up at you and she goes, Vince, what did you do? And she Vince kind of is like- just staring down at the body, uh, possibly with not only the splatter of blood from his father and the thing that came out of him, but also whatever blood just came from uh, yep. Doug, drops the motion sensor and is just looking down at his hands, just shaking and doesn't say anything. The elevator stops and i'm guessing you've like spun the commando around to put him uh between you and the elevator right ben yeah 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 okay strategically speaking i want to make sure i got this right in my head and the commando gets off and sees all of this um he doesn't actually he sees ben and the other commando and doug he would have to because all of you would be outside the vessel um doug's dead body and he immediately pulls his gun <clears throat> from the elevator and he goes well, what what's going on here if you recall, what happened? If you recall, when we came down here in the elevator, right, and I said, if Clipon was to die, who would be in charge? No one seemed to have an answer. It turns out, it's Ben. Ben's he in charge. Of, he, so he, you see him like you hear him kind of like uh, this close range weapon, and he goes, "You didn't answer my question. <clears throat> Why is?" Why is he being held at... What? What is that? It's I believe it's called a mutiny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's called a mutiny. That's what happens. We took over. Ben's in charge. Look at him. No. Waylon, no. I'm in charge. He says, I'm ne I'm next up. And, and I say, y you put that gun down right now, Ben. It's two to one with guns. And one, that guy's already dead, so... He goes, fine. Well, I'm not getting off this elevator. We're all getting on, so that works out great. We don't expect great. you to get off the elevator. We know that your survival sense is probably going to kick in, but if you think that you're going to survive this, you're going to have to start operating together because that dickbag over there, he was going to make sure that we all died somehow. That's why Ben's in charge. I'm guessing uh, you want to live, right? Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yeah. of course. The crates right. upstairs are full of aliens. All right, who's rolling... I either need a command or a manipulation from somebody. Jesus. And it's probably going to have to be Professor or Ben. Command or a manipulation. I would say if you mm. want to command him to come under your command, it would be a command roll. If you want to manipulate him, this is like playing the angle of, we're all going to die, dude. <laughs> but what if I believe that and that's not actually manipulation? <laughs> that's true. Um, it's still... Uh, they say that manipulation is technically the like... That's like that's your that's, that's your convince or, yeah it's your it's yeah, your ability to it's your charisma role yeah. in this game yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay sure 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 um 
Man, I'm I'm I'll be real honest with you right now, uh, Mike. It's it's bad. It's it's bad. I got two dice. Two. Uh, I have I have one additional dice. So uh, I'll I'll take the hit if we need to. Uh, dot. <laughs> Vince would help, but uh, no. <laughs> does the <laughs> fact yeah, does the killed. fact that there is a dead man and we do have more guns than him and his friend already surrendered count as a bonus? I will give you each a bonus die for situation. Perfect. The situation I'm, is not gonna, ideal. And he's roll, definitely on the wrong side of the elevator. I'm going to roll command, I guess, because we need as many... Do each of them have to roll? Is it trained them? boys. Ah! Uh, no, um, I'll let them both roll. We'll give them better level of success. Well, if okay, they fail really right. bad... Yeah, I'll let you both gotcha. roll for now. All right, this is, uh, this is real bad. I'm sorry, really, right now I've got five stress dies, so this is probably going to be bad. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. 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 So, Woo. he he kind of begins to lower his weapon. You see him like uh, um, put a, put the safety on, kind of click the safety on, and and he goes, "Well, if people are in danger, my job is to get you all out." And he says, "So quickly, gather your things. You've got exactly one minute, and then this elevator's going to the top." And Axe, oh, can no. I get a panic roll from you? I guess so, if you have to. Like, if that's a, like a must have. <laughs> Throw the gun, Axe. Don't pull the trigger. <laughs> a seven. Nervous twitch. Oh, I'm pulling the trigger. Perfect. He's pulling the trigger. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> there is a, he's like, oh, he's no. like okay, I'm, I'm going to save you all. He's going to be a good commando. I'm going to save you all. So and it, there's... It, doesn't, it doesn't do any damage. It just makes everyone around me nervous. But I, I think for sure, Dot, from a narrative perspective, I, who has no business holding yeah. this assault rifle, is holding the assault rifle. Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. there's aliens! There's just, they're everywhere! There's <laughs> exactly. And it comes up and, and oh it... Oh my god. I mean, as if he was a good shot. Fires right up this automatic weapon. Just... Uh, up the body of this commando. And he takes a few shots and he kind of looks at all of you like mutiny and then poof, one knee two knee and falls forward his gun clatters to the ground at least the safety was on um and um the stress level and the stress level of all friendly pcs in short range increased yeah. by one so when he lets off that fire Oops. that shot yeah. nobody's ready for it it's that like it rings out and everybody takes a little bit of stress from the random gunshot fire. and you see him let um, go of the gun but he has the holster on his neck so it just kind of hangs there whoa whoa Okay, Fair. okay, all right. Maybe. I would like to intervene the, for a moment. Yes, I, the, yes, um, doctor, please step up. <laughs> she, she stands, she kind of like, she, she was hanging back, like watching this, oh. trying to understand how everybody lost their cool so quickly. Okay, I have something for this. And she takes out her kit and I have a uh, NAPRO leave. So I'm going to administer, I have six doses. Oh. I think everybody needs to take a breath. <laughs> Save one. I, I bought two myself, so oh, save, save one. And she I'll, kind I'll of like mine. just gives it to, to everybody that needs it, and she checks on Vince. It takes uh, all especially. of your stress levels to yes. zero. Yes, it does. Nice. So if you don't have one and you want to use it, now's the time. Uh, <laughs> there's kind of a moment now that all the Wayland yutani reps, except for the one commander who's shaking in his damn boots right now with this massive, like, uh, a bolt gun to his back. Um, you all take a, a minute to, to breathe. Your mother is in mourning, but she's also in a state of shock, Vince. Um, she just watched her husband die. She just watched her son kill a man. Um, and so she's kind of crying off to the side as the doctor begins to pass out what is... Uh, feel good meds, um, basically. Uh, shot to the arm. Everybody that takes one does alleviate your stress. So, it feels real good. Y'all riding that space dragon right now. <laughs> she also uh, gives one to the commando. Yes, give one. Yeah, you're, you're like, this poor guy, he's like, <laughs> yeah, he really needs it. You like stab him in the arm and he kind of like, oh. oh. And everybody takes a moment to breathe. And as the crew and what's left of Waylon Yutani alleviate their stress of a very strange and abnormal situation, our camera pans up the reactor. 
down a very dense little corridor where with a sliver of light passing through we see a creature black skin kind of shiny you'd think it was the same one that came out of your father's chest but now it's larger its limbs more developed and we watch as it kind of and it begins to shimmy out of its skin peeling away the first layer um it kind of quivers and undulates off like a snake and as it pries the last bit of way shaking it off of its back limb this nasty skin like slats to the ground it lets out a sound a cry into the night that echoes up the entirety of this drill and down to the bottom and all of you hear it the xenomorph making its first mutation towards adulthood it will be a hunting soon but I guess we'll just deal with that next week. I don't like, this. I don't like this game. I don't uh, like <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you know, it turns out we're just doing a murder uh, is what we're doing this episode. It's a lot of murder tonight. And uh, I, look, I did so good. I'm only left with two, y'all. I spent a lot of them. Uh, so... Uh, Dot was pretty was pretty clear with what she used her corruption for. Thus, the only reveal of the episode that I have to make is the actual title, which you don't have to wait till YouTube comes out to find out. The title is "Here's Daddy." No, Daddy. Daddy's home. Daddy's no. Was it Daddy Dearest or Daddy's home? Daddy Dearest. Daddy. One of the. Dearest. One of the. Oh, one of them. God. It's a daddy pun. Is the point of the. It is a daddy. The pun. point of the reveal. Here. I didn't know if it was going to be a daddy or mommy pun because they voted on which one of your parents got seated. Yeah. Uh, so one of the corruption <laughs> I mean, bars. I mean, uh, all of the players have oh, no idea. One no. of the corruption bars went to a secret Patreon-only poll in which the patrons got to decide which one of your parents exploded into alien bits. So you can thank Thanks, the community. Thanks, patrons. <laughs> and Dot yeah, didn't I told, know. I told them, I was like, uh, their choices are mom or dad. And yeah. he was like, that's it? And I was like, that's it. Yeah. They get to choose who dies. One of them's going down. And, and, oh and Dot didn't know until like midway through the episode. So uh, that's pretty fun. Um, God damn. Okay, let's go around, do our introductions so we can get out of here and do our Patreon after show. Uh, let's start with the most traumatized person here. Uh, Zach, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, wow. That's all I have to say. That was that was great. I love... I've, I've played a lot of Vampire the Masquerade, uh, but that this is creepy on a whole nother level <laughs> and terrifying on a whole nother level yeah um i mm, yeah i'm i'm an 11 year old kid who just killed a corporate agent i totally was expecting to do that tonight you'll be fine it's, it's mm. but yeah it's no that was that was amazing uh, if you can't tell, Zach is also going through the... <laughs> I also have about six levels of stress right now. So um, aside from that, uh, hi, I'm Zach. And uh, you can find me on the internet mostly at uh, twitch.tv slash Zach Clay, as well as on the channel Arvin Eleron. It's another uh, RPG uh, channel where I, Dot and I do uh, vocalist stuff, as well as I'm in another sci-fi campaign. But uh, yeah. Nope, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. I need some time to process. Maybe in the after show I'll well, have good, more good, because your characters divulge. are going to have two weeks to process. Oh, God. Mm, don't like but, yeah, that. That was great. Fantastic. Bub, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet, and what are you up to? I'm Bub. Man, I just do Bub <laughs> things all over the internet. I mean, if you if you have any understanding of who I am, I, you probably... I've, I've nailed my brand down. I'm just being bonkers and loud and always <laughs> acting out. Uh, so... Find me all over the place at uh, as the Bubbernaut. I'm on Twitch, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that jazz. Uh, pop in the Discord. We've got an active Alien Awakening channel. Uh, it's discord.gg forward slash bub. And um, who knows, man? You guys can see all kinds of kooky stuff that I'm a part of. I've got podcasts and 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 other role playing shows that I'm a part of. And and currently, you're nominated for an Audioverse Award, which people should go vote for. Both of it's us true. are. Go. It's true. It's true. Where it's, can it's, we find that dot? Audioverseawards.com. You okay, can, voting you. is open, nomination is done, but 
Bob and I are in a little podcast and we both got nominated, so go show us some damn love. I'll um I'll actually drop that in for them now. Yeah. In the chat. Thanks. Bob, you also got the latest quote in our quote bot. Uh I believe oh, nice. it was uh when you told Doug to suck your dick. Uh Did so, I? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our mods were all like, what added Put that one in. <laughs> Uh, Meta, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? Hi, I'm Meta Mancer. You guys can find me on Twitter and in Discord. Uh, I have just a link tree, just link tree slash Meta um, That has all my socials on it. So any of the ones that you're interested in, feel free to jump in there. And um, I just do this role play and um, photography, that kind of thing. So, yep. And last and definitely least this time, Dot. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Yeah, you can find me on the little internet as Little Red Dot. I'm doing a whole lot of stuff right now. I've got a lot of projects in the work. This being one of them. Damn, I love this game. I'm kind of sad that it's this short, but I also really love killing all of you that quickly. So I guess I'll talk about that in the after show. But go check it out. I'm doing a podcast right now with Bob. A show that I'm doing with Zach. Um, I've got more uh, sci-fi coming to Mike's channel in the new year, y'all. Check out Coriolis. Um, it's a very different kind of sci-fi game than this one, but no less filled with kind of doom dread type horror mm. and less kind of terror horror. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do a lot of vampire stuff with Bob. That's all That's I true. like we ever talk about. Um, That's true. There's so many things, and I've got a big announcement that I'm hoping to make here the next couple weeks, but I can't do it quite yet. Um, so that's that'll be that'll be cool and fun too. And uh, Swordsfall kicking up and producing my first show on my channel that I'm not actually playing or GMing. Um, Swordfall Swordsfall campaign coming October 27th. Check that out on Tuesday. Fantastic. Um, market calendar is October 23rd. We have the Void one shot coming that up too. for Tamir uh, for Gnome. Uh, and you guys heard it here. Dot would love to do more of this. So if you want more Alien, tag her on Twitter. Tag Free League. Tag all of us. Use hashtag UMG Tell Awakening. Tell the most evil game and, uh, that has ever lived. Right. And maybe we'll see more Alien in 2021. We're currently planning our shows. So, that being said, we're going to get out of here. We're going to go film our after show exclusive for our Patreon. If you want to jump on that, Patreon link down below. If you want to be a part of the conversation, Discord link down below. And that's it for us from all of us to you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Okay.